Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Winter Carnival. This is the story of the Army's expert snowmen, the rugged, white-clad soldiers who train with skis and snowshoes high up in the wind-swept bridges of the Colorado Rockies. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... If you're a specialist, there's a wonderful job waiting for you in the United States Army. And if you're not a specialist, the Army will give you specialized training in a technical field. There are hundreds of jobs open and ready for you to enlist and take over. So check today at your nearest Army recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Winter Carnival. My name is Roger Martin. I'm what is known as a freelance feature writer. I go nosing around in out-of-the-way places looking for stories to write for different magazines and newspapers. I find some yarns in some pretty strange spots. And the one I'm going to tell you about now, I found in the middle of winter, high up on the wind-blasted ridges of the Colorado Rockies near the Continental Divide. I found it at a place called Camp Hale, which is the United States Army Mountain and Cold Weather Training Command Winter School. Next event, sled pulling races. Oh, don't these guys ever get tired, Captain? Ski races, snowshoe races, now... <laughs> oh, they're just getting warmed up. Wait till you see the obstacle race. That's a dilly. I'll bet. I didn't have any idea we had so many expert snowmen in the Army. Hmm? How long have these boys been at it? All their lives? Oh, no. Those men out there just finished our four-week training course. Four weeks? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then they must have been all top-notch skiers in civilian life. Uh, huh? Matter of fact, Mr. Martin, most of them had never been on skis before they came here. And some of them never even saw snow. You mean to tell me that... That's right. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's why we wanted you fellas to come up to our carnival. Get an idea of the type of work we do here. In four weeks' time, one month, you could take a guy that's never seen snow and train him to hop around like an Eskimo? Well, there's your proof. Hey, hey there they go! Well, I live and I learn. Even if I have to freeze to death doing it. Well, it was very good of you, Colonel Scheller, to give me a little of your time. Always glad to talk to a writer, Mr. Martin. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Well, you know, I think I may have frozen the end of my nose off today watching your men. I must admit I was quite impressed. Well, I'm glad to hear it, even at the risk of the end of your nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colonel, Captain Holt said that the men in those races today had only a month's training. That's right. Pretty remarkable to a layman like me. How do you do this? Well, it's a combination of things, but... One of the most important are the men we have here who give the training. Most of our officers and non-coms are veterans of the 10th Mountain Division. 10th Mountain? Italy, the Apennines. That's right. We started the breakthrough into the Po. So I remember. And you say most of your men go back to that time? That's right. <laughs> they like this life. Yeah. Well, I have been thinking there might be a good story here. Not necessarily the carnival, but what goes on here? Oh, there's a story, all right. But let me warn you, Mr. Martin, we're not glamour babies. Our job is not only to train men how to fight in these elements, but also to teach them how to transport men and supplies across mountains. Mm -hmm. And the men like it, huh? I guess so. Tomorrow's a holiday, but you'll see most of them out there doing just what they were doing today. Uh, well, Colonel, I don't know how this will strike you, but I would kind of like to hang around after the carnival is over and watch how you do things. Uh, Mr. Martin... What kind of shape are you in? Hmm? Shape? Physically. Oh, not bad for a desk driver. Why? What have you got in mind? 
When the carnival's over, we'll be starting a new class. We'll be training a group of reserve officers. You got a month to spare? You mean I could tag along and take the training with them? As much or as little as you wanted. You know something, Colonel? You've got a new recruit. Well, what do you say, Hal? Are you sure that high altitude hasn't gone to your head? Maybe, but what about it? <laughs> Months a long time, Rod. Well, what does that mean to you? Your magazine doesn't depend on me, so you get a darn good story in a month. Yeah, if you can last. Well, I'll last. I just want the go-ahead from you. Well, what about pictures? The army photographer here is as good as anybody you can send up. You say it's really good. I wouldn't be wasting your money if it wasn't. Be just right for the March edition. Well, you have to get in by the 20th at the latest. Okay. Is it a deal? All right, Rover boy, go play in the snow. But take care of yourself. You're no chicken. Oh, when you see me again, old Harold McWarrell, I'll be part snowball. <laughs> Sergeant Ed Pasco, the chief instructor whom I was to bunk with, kidded me good-naturedly. But I could tell that he and the rest of the men were really pleased I had decided to hang around. I was, too. Until the first morning when Reveille tore me from the land of Nod in the cold gray dawn, and with chattering teeth and a sleep fogged mind, I fumbled my way into my new G.I. cold weather equipment and stumbled out for morning roll call. Later, I began to seriously wonder if I hadn't stuffed more snow in my mouth than I could possibly chew. Now, the main thing you men will learn in the month to come is what we call over-snow mobility. You'll learn it primarily through the use of skis and snowshoes, and if that's all you had to learn in four weeks, we wouldn't have too tough a job. But you also have to be taught bivouac routine, how to build improvised shelters, sledding, cold-weather evacuation, map and compass navigation, winter tactics, use of the M-29 cargo carrier, survival behind enemy lines, winter hygiene and first aid, cold-weather care of weapons, and man-packing. Now, is that enough, or shall I go on? <laughs> right now, we'll break up into six-man teams and get started on a ski. Oh, yeah, I think uh, all you men should know we got a spy in our midst. This is Mr. Martin. He's a writer getting a story the hard way. Uh, which I've tentatively titled From Man to Snowman in Six Easy Lessons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get with it. Instructors, call off your men. That morning, with five others, Sergeant Pasco taught us the rudiments of care and waxing skis and how to mount the bindings. Before you can learn to ski, you've got to learn how to take care of your skis. They could mean your life. By the time Chow rolled around, I had a red nose, sore arms, and a monstrous appetite. I also had it in the back of my mind that it would be awfully nice to take a nap after lunch. How are you making it, Rog? Oh, slowly, Tom boy, slowly. <laughs> I understand this afternoon we're going to put them on start moving. Put what on? What we've been learning about all morning. Skis, man. Oh, might be nice to sit this one out. No, oh, pass me the saw, will you, Tom? Yeah, sure. You know, we wondered how long you'd last. What do you mean? Just that. Some of the boys even took bets on it. Oh, not that we blame you or anything, but uh, I thought... That I might last longer than the first morning? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe the second or third day, huh? Well, don't get sore, Rod. Right. Listen, after all, there's no tea party, and you're not in the shape we're in. I'll tell you what. For every day I get through, you owe me a cigarette. Two cigarettes, one at noon, one at night, right? <laughs> all right, pay up. <laughs> then we'll go find out what it's like to fall into a snowbank. All right, now we'll try it again. Just stay relaxed. Group 10, turn. Step into your skis. Fasten the binding. That's much better. Now you're going to start learning how to move over the snow. Now it's a simple matter of body coordination. Now notice how I move my arms. Ooh, ooh. A little stiff, Raj? Ed, why don't you just take me out and bury me? I never know the difference. Get yourself a good hot shower and hit the sack. In the morning you'll feel like a new man. As I have so often heard it said, oh, my aching back. <laughs> You're not doing bad, right? Uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh hey. is weak. 
Can any guy come into this igloo, or is it a private wing? Oh, come in, boy. Join the happy throng. Oh, hi, Sergeant. Hi, Lieutenant. I came to give the boys ration. Mm, well, light it, put it between my lips, and smoke it for me. Listen, mm. you're doing fine. You got through a whole day. That's what I've been telling them. Here. Thanks. I wouldn't lie there too long, Raj. You really get stiff if you don't get a good hot shower. Yeah, get yourself a shower, put on your pretty new uniform, we'll go see a movie at the Post Theater. Uh, I'll take the shower, and if it's all the same to you, I'll just quietly lower myself into this ever-loving sack and pray for the longest night of the year. <laughs> <laughs> The next few days went by in a kind of blur. Much as I wanted to go on with this course, I didn't see how I could possibly take it. But whenever I'd reached the point of deciding it was time to bow out, Sergeant Pasco and Tom and the others would all be there to cheer me on or pick me up out of various and sundry snowdrifts. From learning how to move across level terrain on skis, we slowly took to the hills, the gentle ones at first. We learned how to snowplow down hills. It's a maneuver to slow your descent. More often than not, the point of my snowplow is my chin. Keep your heels pushed up. Heels up. Oh. You all right, Rush? Oh, I bet you never had a student as champion a snowball as me. You ever know that there's more insulation in snow than wood? I didn't either until I learned how to build a snow hut. Ever try sleeping on balsam boughs? Sounds kind of uncomfortable, but it's not once you learn how. How about snowshoeing? Ever try that? that? Sounds easy. Looks easy. But it's not until you learn how. In the days that passed, it was amazing the number of things we learned how. And I, who hadn't been on skis since I was a kid, found myself moving along with the others through a winter wonderland, uphill and down, and not in too bad a fashion. Come in. Oh, Mr. Martin, come in, come in. Oh, you wanted to see me, Colonel? I did indeed. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Well, for a minute, I hardly recognize you. You look like you've lost a little weight and taken on a bit of color. <laughs> Colonel, I recommend your course to all fattening desk drivers. <laughs> really enjoying it, huh? Well, I uh, didn't think I'd make it for the first few days. <laughs> your boys pulled me through. Now, they're good boys, aren't they? Mm. I've been a lot of places. I've never found any better. Uh, was there some particular reason you wanted to see me, Colonel? No, just to find out how you were doing. I can see you're doing fine. You think you've got a story here? I've got two stories, Colonel. Training is one. The men who give the training and the men who receive it, that's an even bigger one, even though they both go together. I think that's the story that's going to do a lot of folks a lot of good to read. You know, I'm glad you decided to stay on with us. <laughs> if you're not careful, we might draft you. ha <laughs> ha can't draft a volunteer, Colonel. Uh, you planning to go out on the attack problem? Ah, I wouldn't miss it. The weather's been unusually good lately. I think you can look for a blizzard or two pretty quick. Kind of mean, I'll bet. Uh, some people call a blue norther blue hell. We'll see what you call it. listening to the proudly we hail production Winter Carnival. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Is there a doctor in the house? Your house? Well, I'm not looking for a medical man. I'm looking for a man who can doctor machines used by the United States Army. Machines that get out of commission and need repair. Machines like hospital and surgical equipment in the Army medical centers. Machines like electrical instruments at Army posts around the world. Office machines like telegraphs or typewriters in army offices, machines like the fire control instruments at army camps. If you're a man with experience at repairing these vitally important machines, you'll find that your skills will be put to good use when you enlist in your United States Army. As a soldier expert in this field, you'll increase your technical knowledge and work with the most advanced scientific equipment. Ask for complete details today at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Winter Carnival. The entire class moved out on skis from Camp Hale one bright, sharp morning. As Colonel Scheller had said, what we carried on our back, we'd live on. 
Dressed in white coveralls from hood to boot, moving smoothly and steadily in twin columns, we blended nicely with the snow as we made our way toward the open mountainous slopes ahead. The problem was simple. Somewhere out there at a designated point, we'd come to a halt, we'd turn, and we'd move back in on Camp Hale. Our job was to move in without being detected, to attack swiftly and successfully. Opposed to us were the very men who had been our teachers. We had three days in which to succeed or fail. The only man from Camp Hale with us was Sergeant Ed Pasco. He was the commander of our attack problem. All right, take flight. I think we're losing our nice day. <laughs> Smells like a bit of snow, huh? Yeah, that should be good for us. How much farther out you figure we're going? Oh, probably over that next high ridge there or the one beyond that. Oh, think of all the people sitting in offices right now. <laughs> you think of them. I'm enjoying the scenery too much. <laughs> All that day, we glided along the level, open stretches, herringboning our way up the hills and then swooping with that wonderful fresh-born feeling you get on skis. In the afternoon, dirty gray rubbed all the blue out of the sky and brought along a bitter, gibbering wind with it. And shortly after we halted at dusk, the wind brought the snow. Sergeant Pasco assembled the squad leaders in front of his lean-to, and I came along. All right, gather around. Pull that end of the map, Jack. Okay, Sergeant. Everybody see okay? Yeah. All right. Now, this is how far we've come. We're right here on the lip of this woodland. Now, here to the north is Long Belly Mountain. Our plan is to move along the valley below it with scouts up here on its flank. Now, if the weather clears, they'll be able to spot just about anything that moves way off here to the east. Uh, Sergeant, will the enemy have patrols out already? Yeah. Naturally, they're no danger to us right now, but by tomorrow, they could well be anywhere. They'll be in radio communication with the camp. Now, once they spot us, we'll have a tough time shaking them. Now, if we move out in two hours, daylight should find us just below Long Valley. Then, even if it clears with scouts paralleling us along the mountain, we know they won't be able to spot or surprise us till we reach this point here. Suppose the snow keeps up. Well, if it doesn't get so bad we have to call a halt, it'll be to our advantage. They're the hunters. <laughs> We moved slowly, heads lowered before the lash of the snow-blasting wind. In the thick, noisy darkness, it was all I could do to make out the white bobbing figure of the man just a ski length ahead of me. The snow and the cold bit deeper as the night wore on. The stops became more frequent, and I wondered why Sergeant Pasco didn't call a halt and let us hole up until the storm blew itself out. At three weeks before, I wouldn't have lasted ten minutes. Now, although bone-weary and numb with cold, I knew I could go on with the rest and... The fact that I was a part of this thing, with the men of this thing, was far enough to drive me on. Just before dawn, the snow began to give up, and we fell out to make coffee and get some warmth into our stomachs. Long night, Rush. I'm taking a little walk in my sleep. Boy, this stuff keeps a man alive. Here, have some, sir. Well, snow's about finished. Temperature's really going down. Oh, thanks. Well, where are we? What happens now? Well, another mile, we'll be in the valley below Long Belly. Give you a real break there. Food and a couple of hours sleep. What about the scouts? Oh, they'll make it up someplace else. With two men up there, you'll be able to rest easy. Uh, I'll tell you something. I could rest easy on my head or hanging by my heels. I'll get all you can, Raj. Might not get any more for a couple of days. Oh, that's a joyful thought. It took the best part of a gray, dead cold day to traverse the valley below the lean, protective height of Long Belly Mountain. With scouts paralleling our courses on the ridges above, we knew we were safe from surprise. But now, having reached the end of this helpful terrain, and definitely in the sweep of ranging patrols, we must use our knowledge not only to fight the brutal elements, but also to avoid the eyes of a forewarned adversary. It'll be dark in another hour. I want to be up on that ridge line in those woods before moonrise. Moonrise, Sergeant. We won't see the moon tonight. Don't bet on it, Lieutenant. The wind's changed. If it doesn't change again, it'll be clear within two hours. Now, I want a three-man patrol to push ahead and make sure that it's all clear up there. Suppose it's not. If it's not, the patrol will be captured and we'll know it. How come? The patrol will flash us a prearranged signal if it's all clear. Well, isn't that apt to be seen? Well, only by us. We'll be able to spot anyone coming up from the south or east. What happens if they do have men up there? Well, we'll have to double back to these ridges here... Then cut north and try and get around the flank before dawn. I want uh, 
Three men to go ahead on the double. If they spot you, you'll be on your own. But you won't be able to take our alternate route. You'll have to play decoy and lead them away from us. I always was a decoy at heart. Yeah, me too. Well, look, how about me? I'm not officially one of you, Glad but Glad I... to have you along, Rod. Good enough. You get some coffee and grub stowed away and then report back to me. I'll have the details for you. You got 15 minutes to get ready. So the three of us, Tom, Jack, and myself, moved out in the growing dusk and set a course for the high ridge looming ahead. Within five minutes, we felt very much alone. It's one thing to travel with a well-organized group of men through an icy wilderness, and quite another when you're practically alone. As the evening flooded in and the ridge became a black, irregular line across the darkening sky, I had the growing feeling that we were being watched. We'll take a breather. It's a mean slope ahead. Yeah, we'd better keep our voices down. Yeah, the, the night has a thousand eyes. Yeah, I have the feeling they're all up there watching us. Sergeant was right. Stars are out. The yeah, moon gets up about midnight. We've got to be there in another hour. Let's hit it. Go up that slope. We'll be right out in the open. We can't go through the woods in the dark on these things. Take half the night. Why don't we try the snowshoes? Hey, it makes sense, Tom. You mean carry the skis? Why not? We're traveling light. I'll buy it. Well, let's get them on. Made it. Yeah. No. See if we're alone, huh? Yeah. Jack? I can't see any sign of life down there. Hard to tell, though, in the dark. Maybe waiting for us to make a move. You cover that area over there. Move up through those pines to the high ground. Nothing? No sign. Well, I guess we're alone. Well, time to flash that signal. Oh, oh, gladly. And then we better keep a lookout on each side of the crest. Nice work, boys. Well, now what? Take a rest. Give the moon two hours. All clear, then. We'll shoot down into the valley, get scouts up on the far ridge, and head into the deep woods. We'll hold up there for the day, get a good rest, and move out around nightfall and hit them at dawn. Hmm. Huh? Well, what's quiet, the matter? Quiet, quiet, Raj. What? What's up? We are. The outpost spotted an enemy column, found our trail moving up behind us. We're moving out on the double. We're not going to ski down this, this, this mountain, are we? You know any better way to get off it? But in the dark... The moon will help stop the jabber, get ready to hit the trail. Anybody told me a month ago that one day I'd be skiing up and down mountains, I'd have told them to change their brand. Anybody told me I'd be doing it in the moonlight with the temperature at a nice even 20 below, I wouldn't even bother to answer. But that's what we did. Matter of fact, it was about the most exciting ride I've ever taken. Try it sometimes. Good for the soul. Well, once down the mountain, we forgot about the nice even valley and pushed on as fast as we could into the low wooded ridges on the far side of it. Oh, what do we do now, ambush them? Uh, we just keep moving. Sergeant says the weather's going to turn stinko again, snow. He must have a direct wire to the chief weather maker. Yeah. Well, what happens then? Yeah, maybe we give them the slip, maybe we don't. You can bet they've radioed the rest of their pals. We're probably being converged on from six different directions. All right, Ben, move out. Move out. Yeah. Keep your interval and keep going. Scouts are fired on, wait my command. <laughs> It was the snow that saved us. The loveliest blizzard of the season came roaring down out of the north and cut visibility down to a few feet. Once during the afternoon, one of their patrols went blundering past as we lay in a thin stand of pine. By all rights, we should have stopped moving and holed up till the storm blew itself out, but Sergeant Pasco had other plans, and we struggled on and on and on. The camp down there. How do you know? It could be a million miles from here. Didn't I tell you I was part mountain goat? You honestly mean that we're there? Yep. What do you say we go down and wake them up? Well, let's go! Who goes there? The enemy! Drop your gun, you're overwhelmed, buddy! Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Where'd you guys come from on a night like this? 
Don't you know enough to hole up in a blizzard? Lieutenant, take the prisoner to the rear. <laughs> to tell you we've captured your camp. You've what? Well, who the... What? Well, I'll be a... Monkey's uncle, Colonel. In space. Majestic mountains, aren't they? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Wonderful skiing there. Yeah. If you don't mind my saying so, you look like someone who's done a bit of skiing. I do? Why? Oh, you have that healthy outdoor look. Not like me, sit at a desk all day. Well, a month ago, you might not have thought so. You've been on a vacation up there? Vacation? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you could call it that. Best one I've ever been on. Regular uh, winter carnival. Well, that must have been fun. Yes, educational, too. Taught me a lot about some young fellas I met. Really? Who were they? Oh, some guys, it's been pretty wonderful to know. They're helping to do a job. The biggest job in the world today. Hmm. Biggest job in the world. What would that be? Well, since you asked me, mister, I'd be glad to tell you. You know, there are lots of things I could tell you about the United States Army... And they're all good reasons why you should enlist. But if you want to be really convinced, I suggest that you talk with a career soldier. Now, there's a man who's making a lifetime job of it. And he already knows that he's got a job that just can't be beat. But if there aren't any career soldiers around your particular community, why, the next best thing to do is to visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. They'll be glad to show you all the opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in the Army. Yes, your investment in the future of your country will start paying dividends right away. And the sooner you're in, why, the sooner you benefit. Check today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>